I mean, I work with the most incredible crew. I am really lucky with the crew I have. They've read all the comics. I gave them, up, I don't know how many, how many, how many films to watch. Teenage films, films from the 60s, musicals from the 60s, musicians from the 60s. Then they did different acting workshops. They did dance workshops. They did singing workshops. They had to do skating, swimming, cycling. They came to set trained. Yeah, yeah, they're pros. You know, when you grow up in a house and you have parents you get on with or parents that you admire, uh, you just end up doing things they do. And it's as simple as that. And who was anyone to say you can't do this or you can't do that? So Ab, first, I think we need to establish that we both live in Bandra. Yes. But this interview is happening all the way in Brazil. Yes. <laughs> at <laughs> Dome. Uh, you know, it was so lovely to see these debutant actors on the stage and, and with the best of the best from around the world. What was it like for you? You've been working with them, mentoring them for what, a few years now? Yeah, I know it's uh, been, um, I mean, yeah, it's been a year and a half since they started the boot camp and then the shoot and everything, maybe a little more. Uh, yeah, it was insane and it was great that the first, uh, their first coming out literally was uh, happened at a scale like this. I think they're ready for anything. You know, I, I, I mean, I, I was shocked at their confidence and uh, nobody mean, was nervous. They, all, they must have been nervous, but they didn't let it show. You know, I was, I think, a little more nervous than them. They, they, they were very good, you know, to get out there and like perform in front of 10,000 people, yeah. 10,000 physical, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, people. And then online, I don't know how many. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. You know, your stories, Zoya, whether it doesn't matter who they're about or where they're placed or whether it's going theatrical or streaming. There are always stories about inclusivity, you know, about having compassion, um, about more layered women, right? How challenging was it to thread a more progressive worldview into an American comic book that was first published in what, 1942? Uh, I mean, the, the, the trick was like when I got this and when I was asked if I want to adapt it, uh, I didn't want to do a modern take. A, it's been done. I mean, Riverdale has done it. And B, uh, that wasn't the Archie of my, that's not my experience of Archie. My experience of Archie is a, a, a simpler time, a yeah. more innocent time yeah. and uh, a gentler time, you know, and uh, where less was more. Uh, and I wanted to go back to that. And I wanted to keep the original essence of the comic and find a way uh, to have that innocence, but find a way to, for it to resonate with kids today. Uh, with young adults today because th I was reading it when I was like 12, like that, that tween age. So you wanted to, to resonate with kids today. So thematically use what matters to them and weave that into a story um, set in that time. That but is, a, is that hard? Because, you know, the last time we talked, you had also talked about how it is about the environment. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're looking at some of those issues mm -hmm. in this narrative. So then did you take the framework and say, how can I talk about things that I'm concerned with? No, you just see the thing is, this is this is the comic, you know, and the comic is episodic. Like yeah. the comic is like short stories, gags, they're episodes. But there, there is an overriding essence of that comic. You take that comic, you take the characters of that comic and you set it into a structured story narrative. So if it's a three page in the thing, we've done a hundred page. You know what I'm saying? You just create your own story in it. And it's, I mean, it seems daunting, but you have, when you sit down to write it and these are your characters and these are the things you're playing with, obviously you adapt it, obviously you change certain things, you uh, pronounce certain things more, you uh, kind of put into the back burner certain qualities. You have to play with that because it is a screen adaptation. But it's not so, I mean, we'll know once the film comes out <laughs> how it's panned out, so I shouldn't be saying anything right now. You know, you always said that you're obsessed with the idea of friendship in movies. Why? I don't know. I think... I think, uh, uh, I think both my brother and me both have that. We have very, very deep friendships. Uh, when we, were, we have friends like family. And I don't know if that came from like the fact that when we were kids, we, you know, maybe things, we both had a broken home. I think we came from there. And uh, uh, somehow your friends just became very strong in a sense. I don't know this, I, I think. And uh, um, it, it's very important to me. Like I have very deep friendships and I have very old friendships. Uh, and they mean a lot to me. And uh, um, I think it just comes out. 
you know like i'm constantly coming of age in every movie i don't know what that means i have peter pan syndrome when will zoya actually come of age i saw it happening <laughs> i'm not seeing it it's like a recurring theme i mean i've now started seeing it and do you do you find yourself consciously uh not repeating things because you know friendship you will say okay there are five beats yeah in in the sort of friendship saga yeah. and how do you kind of innovate within that yeah do you find yourself consciously saying okay i can't go there because i've done this no 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 it organically I, flows yeah it flows i don't i, I don't uh, like i consciously don't want to make the same film like i i find uh, uh, till now like i haven't felt that like i want to do the same thing uh, but i am doing the same thing i am coming of age so that i'm consciously doing that you know so i can't say that i'm so different because thematically i am touching the same things uh, which i think most filmmakers tend to do you know they yeah. have certain themes that they keep going back to but uh, um no i don't think so much like i just go with that tone of that story and what organically would happen to these people and uh, and it, it, if you're true to that milieu and you're true to that tone and you're true to that character it will differentiate from another you know you know this tone is such a difficult thing to to actually describe or or uh, articulate mm. uh, and when you look at the archie's trailer there is such a tone mm. as a director how do you how do you decide what that will be and then how do you actually execute tone you know uh you see like one one thing is when you're writing it because uh, uh we write our own material i mean this was written with reema and aisha we write our own material uh you already know uh what it sounds like you already know and that's where your for me the tone begins the tone in the sound of it yeah in the sound of it my tone begins like what is their what is their mood what is the level of drama what is their pitching how serious is this is this go is it make or break or is it teenage life you know is it uh, you know you just roll with the punches w- what is your tone that comes from there it comes organically from the writing and then from that i mean i work with the most incredible crew I am really lucky with the crew I have. Uh the minute they read the script, we we discuss it and you kind of explain to them and uh, or give them an image, you know, even if it's a photograph sometimes, they just know what you're looking for and they take it to a level I can't. Uh, I, because I'm not an expert in but they get what you want. They get what I want yeah. and they get me and we've developed a working equation now over a period of time and uh, they are obviously experts in their field and they can they do things that i cannot imagine so i know what i want but i would never be able to take it there you know so i i have a crew of incredible artists that i work with and they develop that tone with me mm-hmm. you know and we are militant with it we are militant and sometimes what happens is sometimes it becomes like is it too niche sometimes it becomes like is it too particular not catering to everybody and that's what you have to live with but the people that it does cater to respect it for that right you know so yeah. the people that understand it or like it or it resonate with it they respect it that it sticks to that tone but with something like this zoya where obviously there is no box office pressure right mm. so you're not thinking about like friday opening kya hone yeah. wali hai right yeah So with the Archies could you actually uh, go as niche as you want in terms of a specific look or a texture no see i feel uh, uh, everything is a double edged sword you know so sometimes when you don't have box office then you're relying only on uh, review yeah and you're relying only on people's mind. sometimes the reviews could be terrible or people didn't relate to it but the box office is huge so you balance out so it's a double edged sword so mm-hmm. it's not like this is better than that and the thing is you you uh, I mean I always do what I want and then I panic when it's coming out so I can sit here and say that but I when I'm making the film I I'm like this with blinkers mm-hmm. and I'm like this is what it is and this is how I see it and this is how it should be and of course when you are working with you know and someone's funding you, you you there are things that you do that cover it you know the way you cast it the kind of music you use uh, uh uh the language you use you make it universal in a way you know you make that tonality universal to a certain amount of people but you i stick to my thing then i'm like oh, did i stick to my thing too much i don't know you know let's see tum hoga yeah we'll see when it comes out <laughs> okay tell me what this boot camp was like what did these debutant actors go through everything i mean they started from scratch you know they had to read the comics 
uh, obviously they had to because it, it's not their generation so they had to read the comics uh, i did they them, know about the archies of course they all knew yeah some of them okay. knew more than the others mm -hmm. but they knew uh, they've read all the comics i gave them up, i don't know how many how many how many films to watch just from the period like what? Uh, just uh, or teenage films, uh, films from the 60s, musicals, you know, just a different tonality and different like, uh, like musicals from the 60s, musicians from the 60s, uh, girls from the, you know, just different things, uh, teenage films, uh, things like that. Then they did different acting workshops. They did dance workshops. They did singing workshops. They had to do skating, swimming, cycling. They had to do uh, everything you can think of. Then we did an entire workshop with them with camera uh, to explain to them what hitting the mark is. What because it's a very technical job. So catching the light, hitting your mark. What does it mean to give shoulder? What does it mean to be in a close up? What does it mean to be in a wide? What is continuity? How do you have action continuity? Uh, what uh, What is set protocol? You know, so the AD would come and speak to them, the continuity. But so they, what, they, came they went to, to school. They, they went to school. They came to set trained. Yeah, yeah, they're pros. <laughs> Are you tough? No. No. I mean, I don't need to be. Like, tough means what? Means like, you know. Are you a screamer on set? No, or? I don't scream. No. No, I don't scream on set. I, I don't like that energy. And I think the energy on a set comes from the top. Absolutely. And uh, I don't like that energy. I don't, um, I find, I don't want, I don't want people around me to be stressed. I mean, we're making a movie and it's, uh, I love what I do. And everyone I work with likes what they do. And I want that energy to be productive. And I don't like people being stressed. So no, I don't enjoy it. But till you, you chase what you want and you will continue to repeat till you get it. You won't cut yeah. slack because they're new. No, I'll I'll push for what I want. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah but yeah. so yeah, you've you've trained them in all of this. But you, more than anyone mm. else, having grown up in the business, know how rough it's going to be. Yeah, when they make that debut, and yeah. how much uh, there is going to be negativity. There is going to be talk yeah. about nepotism. How have you trained them for that? I mean, you, you've you grown up. See, at the end of the day, we all grow up and we all grow up wanting to follow our dreams. And it's very, um, you know, when you grow up in a house and you have parents you get on with or parents that you admire, uh, you just end up doing things they do. And it's as simple as that. And who was anyone to say you can't do this or you can't do that? No, no, absolutely. You know? So that's But it. I'm saying how, they, I mean, is they, there training for them to... How do you deal with that when they finally, you know, as they did yesterday, step out into the public? You know, you don't. You have to like roll with the punches. You have to get out there. Just suck it up. It's yeah. yeah. There's no, you have to you have to keep your head down and work hard. Yeah. That's it. At the end of the day, if you do your job well, you'll be unstoppable. Do your job. That's it. Everything else, like just I just bubble myself. I just focus on what I have to do and if I do it well or if I do it honestly, it'll find its audience and that's it. You can't control anything but yourself. Yeah. What else can you control? That's so good advice. You can't control anything. You can't control what people say. You can't control what people think. You can't control if they like you. You can't control if they don't like you. You can just control what you put out. And so that's what you should do. Just focus, be a Jedi. That's it. What else can you do? Yeah. Keep your head down and work Keep hard. Keep your head down and work perfect. hard. That's it. Just do your job. Everything. If you do it well, it'll align. Yeah. Tiger Baby now has Tiger Telly, which makes ads. Mm -hmm. You've just launched a music mm -hmm. label. You know, what's your vision for how your style of storytelling is going to shape the pop culture narrative in India? You know, I don't know. What do you want? I don't know. And uh, Reema doesn't know. And uh, we'll know maybe if we manage to do what we want. We just want to be a space that um, enables uh, uh, stories. And when I say stories, I don't just mean films. Um, uh, that we feel something about. That's it. We just want to be a space where we, what we value, how we see the world, find the space and like-minded people can come in there and whether it's make a documentary, whether it's make a podcast, whether it's uh, uh, cut a song, whether it's um, uh, be a designer and make some, whatever the hell. We want to be that space where you can come and just find something to do and tell your tale. 
you know, if that tale resonates with us, obviously. Uh, uh, that's just it. We don't know where it'll head. We don't know if we're going to go there. My friend Ankur Tiwari keeps laughing at me and says, next will be petrochemicals. <laughs> because he's like, you Zaya got... petrochemicals. No, tiger like, petrochemicals. Yeah, he's like, he just keeps laughing at me. He's like, what is next? Because we just want to, we want to do every, we just look at us. We just want to do everything. But that's but, so great. Yeah, but in our own little small way, and uh, do the things we want to do and do the things we like. That's it. And we don't know where it'll head. But uh, it's what we, like what we want to put out into the world. How, how if, if I am a young storyteller somewhere and I completely resonate with what Tiger mm -hmm. is putting out, how do I get an entry? Is there, there's an email, there's a website? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a website. Also, firstly, if you have anything written material, please register it because we don't want any problems. And uh, just either contact the office, contact the website, and we, our head of content is called Kartik Shah. Contact him and please send your material in. Fab. Yeah. Sounds amazing. Yes. Cannot wait to see the Archie. Zoya, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.